Hello everybody, it's your boy Durf, and welcome back to Skrip Make Nick. So we're back at it again with the Number Logic Camera Controlled Vehicle series of videos. If you haven't seen any of these videos before, I'm going to leave a link to a playlist down in the description below, or you can click the top right of your screen right about now. Uh, but in the last video, we took a look at this camera controlled plane. This plane is probably the easiest thing to fly, and I'm quite pleased with myself. Now, although this plane is actually easy to fly, it is meant for beginners, so a lot of the control that you would have when piloting a plane, uh, this plane actually controls for you. So it is kind of limiting in the things that you can do with it. For example, you can't fly upside down, you can't do barrel rolls with it, and that's because this plane takes some of that control away from you to make sure that you're staying up in the air. And in that last video, I mentioned that, you know, maybe I could do the control scheme a little bit differently, maybe create a stunt plane. And I asked what you guys thought in the comments, and boy, you guys said yes, do the stunt plane. So today, that's what we're doing. We're checking out the stunt plane. So this plane is indeed a stunt plane. You can do backflips with it, you can do barrel rolls, you can fly upside down, you can do all sorts of fancy goodness with this. But because you have this extra control, this extra layer of control, it is a little bit harder to pilot. It's still quite easy to pilot, actually, but uh, compared to the last plane, this thing is not for beginners. So like the last plane, uh, you do have to have a little bit of an awkward angle for takeoff, but this plane's thruster is slightly more powerful to give it a little bit of extra speed and control, and that does help with takeoff a little bit. Uh, this plane is camera controlled, so you point up and you point down and it'll adjust the pitch. If you point left and right, though, that's actually more of a yaw control than the previous plane. So the big difference between this plane and the previous plane is that for this plane, you actually have to control the plane's roll manually with A and D. And that allows you to do all kinds of tricks like barrel rolls. I know I'm gonna get some comments in the comments. Actually, Durf, that's not a barrel roll, that's an aileron roll. And a barrel roll is actually something that takes up like a lot more space in the air, but Whatever, we all know this is a barrel roll because of Star Fox 64. Do a barrel roll! And we're doing barrel rolls. So the great thing about this plane is, and controlling the roll is that you can actually fly upside down on command. So let's go ahead and show you some cool stunts, like doing a dive bomb and then pulling up at the last second. And there's also this other stunt. Um, uh, it's where you fly your plane sideways like this. And it is a little bit difficult to do, but you just cut in between some... <laughs> oh, jeez, that was that made me nervous a little bit. This plane can also do some other tricks too, like backflips. So let's just go ahead and we're going to point our plane down, and then we just point straight up and turn her over. Point down again, turn our mouse over again. There you go. So this plane, compared to the last plane, is a lot of fun to pilot, and there's a lot of tricks that you can do with it, but it does take an experienced pilot to actually have some control over what they're doing, because, as I said before, this plane is a little bit more difficult to pilot than the previous plane, where the plane just sort of does everything for you. But let's go ahead and see if we can fly through those rings. And it is a little bit easier if you uh, go up on the, or go easy on the thrust like I did. Now there is like another trick that you could also do. Uh, I think if you just go straight up and then let go on the thrust a little bit, it's possible for you to like stall your plane in the air, in midair like this. And it looks really cool. And then to get out of it, you just keep on the thrust a little bit more and you get your control back. So yeah, a very cool stunt plane. I'm having a lot of fun just flying this around. So let's take a closer look at the logic of this plane and see how it works. All right, we're gonna pull up both these planes side by side so that we can compare the differences. Okay, so the first thing that you might notice is that these planes do look a little bit different. Uh, this plane has fewer wing parts on it. Uh, like this plane over here, it has additional small wings on the top and bottom on the front and top and bottom on the back as well. And this is just to help with the yaw controls. Like for example, when I was flying, when I was doing the knifing trick in the sky, uh, you actually need these extra wings to help you stabilize in the air when you're sideways uh, because having like the, the plane has uh, What is this six seven eight eight wings just to control pitch and they're big wings, too But if we just stuck with the one large wing to control the yaw That's not quite enough to help the plane fly. We actually need a little bit more in the front and back so there might be a smarter design to do this, but um, 
I just went with sticking some on the front and back. It kind of looks like the tail fin is just like sort of sloped upwards anyway. And the ones at the bottom are just kind of like hidden. So now I can show you what the small wings do. Uh, if you're going from side to side, you can see that they help with the yaw controls. And same thing for the small wings in the back there. They also help with yaw controls. So as you can see, they sort of counteract the ones in the front and they'll help with a sharper turning angle. But just like the other plane, there is an orient block uh, for the camera controls, of course, with the pitch and yaw controls set to multiplication blocks to multiply by a set angle to control the wings. And we have the positive and negative, and we send that to the left and right front wings and left and right back wings. So one thing that you might not have noticed is that this plane isn't actually trying to control itself unless you're actually sitting in it. And that's just a, a little bit of extra logic just to make sure, uh, you know, you don't really need it. Uh, but I put it in there just because some people were mentioning that in the comments that couldn't you have the plane not active when you're sitting in it or any of these other camera controlled vehicles, couldn't you just like turn it off unless you're sitting in it? And yes, yes you can. So right here I have a seated block straight connected to the seat and then that gives a value of zero or one depending on if you're sitting in it. So we just send that to the multiplication blocks. So right now, everything's being multiplied by zero, nothing's gonna happen. Unless we're sitting in it, in which case all the other multiplications that are gonna happen are multiplied by one, allowing them to actually send their numbers to the wings. Really similar logical setup, so if you actually haven't seen the previous video where I explain how this logic works, um, do check out the previous video, because that's where most of this logic will make sense. So on the back of this camera controlled plane, we have this exometer set to orient mode, which is multiplied by some numbers and positive negative and then sent to left and right wings. So this little bit of logic helps to automatically roll the plane so that it's never tipped over. And this is what makes this plane super easy to fly. However, on this plane, we have the seat hooked up directly to an AD converter and then we're gonna use that to send to the left and right side respectively so that that controls the roll of the plane. So this is the bit of logic that gives us manual control over the roll of the plane and the front logic is what takes care of the pitch and yaw of the plane. But there is one very important thing to point out. Uh, so this orient block, this is actually set to local mode, which a lot of people, I've been getting a lot of questions about what's the orient block local mode, how does it work? And I will be doing a full video on how the local camera mode works, but that's gonna be on my second channel, Scrap Mechanic Mods. The video is gonna be made very soon where I fully explain how to use the exometer and the orient block. So a lot of people have been asking questions. There are some hidden features that a lot of people don't know about. So I'm gonna be making a full tutorial guide video on how to use those new parts, the, the exometer and the orient block. But for now, I'm just gonna briefly explain uh, the local mode in the camera. So if I'm pointing my camera upwards relative to the orient block on both planes, the orient block is gonna send the information to angle the wings upwards to fly the plane upwards. And that's true for both planes. If both planes are upside down and I point my camera upwards to the sky, this plane is going to send the same information because the orientation of the camera is pointing up. So it'll make the wings point upwards, but because the plane is upside down, it'll actually force the plane to fly downwards even worse than before. However, this local mode camera is gonna check where I'm pointing the camera relative to this orientation block. So if this plane is upside down and I'm pointing my camera up, that is actually a direction that's down relative to that orientation block. So if we just pretend the world is upside down right now and I'm pointing, if I point my camera upwards relative to this orientation block, it would be like as if I'm pointing downwards because the plane's upside down. And that's how this orientation block would know to send the correct information to the wings to actually help the plane fly downwards to relative to itself, but upwards relative to the world. Now the interesting part about this is that the local mode, if we're flying our plane sideways, uh, then pitch becomes yaw and yaw becomes pitch. So it's actually a really interesting, let's fly, let's get into the plane again and we'll fly up into the sky and I'll show you what I mean. So with my orientation block sideways, uh, if I point up, that's actually gonna control the wings for yaw to allow me to adjust up and down. And this is what lets us fly the plane where our camera is pointing, no matter the orientation of this plane. 
It's actually an incredibly easy setup and you don't have to do any extra additional math or anything like that. Ooh, I thought I was gonna hit that for sure. So it's actually really cool. It inverts the controls automatically because it's all relative to the orientation block. This is a lot of fun. And pull up. There we go. Oh, don't hit a tree. So yeah, that is my stunt plane build, and I decided to give it a different color. I went with the uh, the dark blue with the yellow wingtips. Um, I, what's that? Uh, what's that group of stunt pilots? Is it the Thunderbirds or so? I I don't actually remember. Maybe somebody in the comments can let me know. And also in the last video, I asked you guys what else you wanted to see. Some people had the suggestion of maybe do like a, a camera controlled rocket or guided missiles or stuff like that. Uh, but if there's anything else that you want to see, do let me know in the comments down below what you want to see for the next number logic camera controlled vehicle series video series. And I'd be happy to give a shot at creating some of your amazing ideas. So do let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.